Hello everyone, welcome to Ilian and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Alex. Alex from Lithuania, but he lives in London. So let's see what Alex has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, how Where's are you? Hat? I'm going to put it. I can put it all if you want. <laughs> all I thought that was your signature. Right, let's see how it goes. Better? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. That's how I remember you from the picture. That's nice. It just made my day now. Say that. My goodness. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, okay, Alex. So, before we start the game, just tell me, um, so where are you from originally? Lithuania. Lithuania? Yeah. And uh, yeah. how, how long have you been in London for? Uh, like, just 10 years. Well, not just 10 years. It's, it's a long time, considering oh, I'm wow. 29, you know. Oh, wow. And uh, what do you like the most about London? Um, that's a good question. I guess, mm, you know, when people ask like, you know, do you want to go back? And it's 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 going to sound really bad, but I I would really miss like Amazon. Because <laughs> Lithuania don't have Amazon and it's... And no way! <laughs> no, I know it's like, it's ridiculous, but it makes my life simpler. And it's not only Amazon, but it's, it makes, you know, the good uh, transport, uh, the easy connections with, you know, because you have a, a lot of airports, you can travel easily to any destination. And uh, the people, because there's so many people, you can, you feel very free, uh, as in, because it's, it's, it, you know, if you, for example, being, uh, racist or if you're being you know like homophobic it's it's you're gonna hate a lot of people in london and you know and because of this sheer quantity of people it's just like i think people accept who they are and it's just like we're all friends here i don't know I, that's how i feel in london it's true um, it's funny it's funny saying that because um, i've been living in london for 14 years now and i was living in portugal before when i moved from brazil i went to portugal before and uh, yeah. i remember like let's say like 14 years ago when I was going to, I have a good friend who lives in Holland, he's Portuguese. And when I when I need to go to Holland, I need to fly to London first and go to I know, yeah. I know that it's a long way. And from here it's like 40 minutes on the on the yeah. you know on the <laughs> on the, the plane. So yeah, I, I understand what it means. Um, and Alex, what do you miss the most about um, your country? Um, well I would say probably my family because you know it's it's not nice that i can't see them all the time um also cheap restaurants oh, I, cool. i'm a bit of a chief's gang so you know so <laughs> i'm like i like to eat you know like to a place where you know you can just order anything from the menu and it's not gonna cost you a fortune um also uh, what i mentioned there's a lot of people here so it's like a little bit of like air pollution it's I definitely see. it's it's more noticeable in London than you back home because it's like we have so much greenery, so much, so many forests are like surrounding the cities. Uh, it's you know, it's so I'm asked probably the things I would do the most. Yeah, I, I, a friend of mine as well. Yes, two days ago he's in Porto now in Portugal, and uh, he sent me a, he had like a meal, like a, a lunch, and he sent me the bill. Yeah. He had look, he had, had like a, a, a soup, like a, 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 yeah. a little soup. He had uh, the dish of the day, like well, like homemade, and he also had yeah. like a drink. And he sent me yeah. the, the picture of the the, the bill. bill, six euros. I couldn't believe. I was like, Kami, I I, I don't remember because I lived in Portugal. I know how cheap this can be. And so I was like, my goodness, you cannot yeah. you cannot like have a meal in London for six euros. Like yeah, a, a, you like get a like a salad from Fred here <laughs> for like six pounds. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay, Alex, welcome to William the Magic Box. Full of random fun questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to get in the mood before we start the game, okay? Ready for the first question? Yes. Let's do it. Please. Okay, Alex, um, what did you think was the most challenged part of being a kid? I don't know. I think listening to the adults and always them like knowing that they are right 
but you're still protesting and you are like no it's gonna be you know my way but like somewhere deep inside you know that they are right and i think that's like that contradiction within yourself i don't know you know when they say like you shouldn't go out at you know like 11 o'clock to meet your friends it's, it's you know and you're like no i want to but it's you know why they're saying this and i think yeah <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a good good question. I wasn't prepared for that. For sure. <laughs> no, but it's funny saying that because I totally agree. I totally understand what I mean. When you are a child, sometimes you wanna express yourself and you write about something. You wanna explain, and they don't listen to you sometimes. You know, like the adults or your parents or even teachers. Sometimes they wanna share. You know, and uh, I learned once actually. I was um, at least I was watching this documentary, and they said that the parents they should listen to the kids and believe in them what they're saying because mm. sometimes you know they 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 mean it and some. Sometimes it's yeah. most of the time it's true, and they, and sometimes if you don't listen to them, you know, they, you can miss a lot about it, you know, because you're not encouraged yeah. them to express themselves since the early age. So, totally yeah, agree with that's you. our part. It's, yeah, I know because you know sometimes, especially in the kindergarten, I remember saying like I don't like a certain vegetables, and they would still force me to eat that. There so you know, and I still don't eat this vegetable till today, which yeah. is like canned uh, canned peas and. Um, you know, so that that's probably even more frustrating. You know, um, when you you know from your bottom of your heart that you don't want to do this, but because you're a child, you have to follow the rules what adults tell you to do. Great, good. Let's go for another one. Let's do it, like Alex. Right. What makes um, what made you laugh this time? Because I before this I ran with my friend, uh-huh. and uh, and we were just running together, and uh, he asked me, you know, like people keep looking at me is like and and I was like why and and he was like I I have a feeling you can see my penis through my shorts, <laughs> and then I looked and he's like don't look and I'm like well I can't tell you, <laughs> I'm not. Gonna- so we just so yeah it was like a little bit strange because i kind of kept looking because i wanted to know if you can't see it but then he it was like no no don't look and so it was like all right but then yeah i guess that's when i laughed the most recently which is like an hour ago that's funny that's very funny <laughs> right let's go for another question right alex um Next question is, um, what's the best and the worst of living in London? Uh, I want to say the worst is probably what I mentioned before. Is um, the worst thing would be air pollution. Okay. I think so. Um, Because, you know, if you're going to live in London, you're probably going to have a you know, your life expectancy cut short by like six or seven years, which is like, <sighs> um, the best thing would be, I want to say, our opportunities. Yes. I don't know, there's just everything you, you can think of, you could probably do here. There's a society for every single thing. Um, everything is gonna be like more or less like close to you you know do you want to do the climbing gym that's like across the street uh gymnastics club just you know burgess park like 15 minutes from where i live you know work is is another like 10 minutes and it's just everything is like within this like close proximity well maybe i'm like a weird like example and people don't experience this but i think just because there's so many people and it's so condensed that you, you do you can find anything you want in London and that's what I mean by like possibility. That's so true. I think London is a is a place of opportunities. You know, there's there's no way you can say like oh I, you know it cannot find this or find that. You cannot go there. Or go, mm. You know, there's always something to do. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think I like the most in London as well. And of course, you can meet so many people like worldwide and share different mm. um, culture and yeah. everything. So that's um, great, yeah. Alex. Yeah. Just one. Let's go for another question. Um, quite good one. What's the what is your funniest memory of a date that you had? I don't know if it's like the funniest one, but I'm like you know my boyfriend now. 
I feel like our date was quite interesting one, like the like the how it came to be because I remember reading his profile and he said something like, "Oh, I said I can uh, I most likely can beat you at running and most certainly on push up." And I was, "Oh, bitch, please, bitch, please." <laughs> <laughs> and when I texted him, you know, like obviously I was like, "Oh, hey, how are you?" And, and you know, like we developed conversation, and and I said, "Like, would you like to go on a date?" And he's like, "Yes." And I'm like, "That's great. Like, let's meet by the London Bridge, and let's go running because you know, clearly you're really good at it." And then he's like, "Okay." And he told me he he wasn't expecting. Like, he brought all the you know the clothes, but like obviously he met me and I straight like back in his changing rooms, change here, and then like. We we like run and I'm I'm really good at running. <laughs> and even wow. though he was doing parkour and he thought he was quite fit, later on he thought like he was gonna die. <laughs> and he just tried. And, and the thing is, I was just run, like running like my average pace and still managed to keep like you know keep a conversation. Whereas he most of the time he was just you know. And then halfway through, I kind of stopped and I said like, okay, we're gonna do like push-ups now because you know you said we're really good at push-ups. So yeah, and I remember. Like my like normal, I do about 30 push-ups, and that's how much he did. But because I'm used to doing 30 push-ups, obviously I pushed myself and did 40. And I was like, well, so Patrick, so I guess I beat you at running and push-ups. <laughs> so yeah. And, oh, uh, that's a, that's a nice know, thing. So, uh, yeah. So I don't know if it's necessarily funny, it is, but actually. it's something it I was quite proud of myself, you know. But yeah. <laughs> And we're still oh. dating now, so that's amazing. Where he's from? Uh, Australia. Amazing. Oh, this is cool. Very nice story. I love it. Nice. Let's go for another question, Alex. Let's do it. <laughs> right, Alex. Um, what do you think people need to know about each other before they start a relationship? My motto when I was dating people, just I would throw myself out there and um, I mean, I do think the question is what you should know before and I think uh, as much honesty early on is like the best, I think, because it's it's very easy, you know, like when, when you meet the, like a person you never met before, like for example, me talking with you, I feel like I could tell you anything at all. Like, 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 because it doesn't matter in a way because we're like we are strangers, and you know. But you know, the more we would develop a relationship, like I feel like uh, with other, you know, or with anyone else, you know, you you would feel like more exposed. You feel like if you're gonna share something privately, then it, you know, it it, it waits more. Um, so. So I think like in the beginning uh, of a relationship, you know, like I uh, just tell the things you probably like the least about yourself. So the person is aware of uh, who you are and it's going to be much easier for them to to navigate the relationship. And, Very good points. Uh, Very good points. I, I really I totally agree. Just, makes it just so much everything much easier it's the worst thing when people hiding and try to project that image it's not them and you sure. know and it's like hiding and oh and imagine if someone for example they are um uh, well for example me i'm quite like materialistic guy so let's mm -hmm. say maybe someone is really really aren't you know so me telling this right in the beginning of a relate like you know like if i would meet them on a the first date it's good that they would know this and then they will they all option one they would be like oh i can never date this person or number two is you 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 might think like okay i already know this this big thing about this person you know and he's aware of it but maybe we can navigate this relationship you know so you're going in already knowing the baggage uh, rather than you know he finding this later on because he would find out and then 
you have this unpleasant conversation, then maybe he's like, oh, I don't know. You know, it's it it, it also could save time if if, if you know, it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. I think it's about being honest and about being open as well. And if the person if the person is gonna accept you, is I, I think how to appreciate. You know, if, if I say something like negative about myself, and he, they, if they yes. you know if they I like or that, I would appreciate the person. Uh, you know what I mean? I think about appreciation. And I think yeah, it's a risk because people go like, oh, maybe I don't like that, or maybe I appreciate to say that, and I'm gonna work through it. And yeah, that's uh, yeah. I really it's worth taking. It's worth taking because you know it's just a it's start of a good a good relationship. Let's go for another one then. Let's do it. Yeah, right, do what's dance, your... I can do something else. <laughs> what's your favorite kitchen smell? Kitchen smell. Ooh. Uh that I will say the fried garlic. Mm, nice as well. I like it as well, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously that lasts for like 30 seconds till it burns. But, but if good. you, but that, but that's the trick, you know. Like once the oil is hot, you pour, you pour the garlic fries for 30 seconds, and then you pour everything else. Don't let it burn. But that 30 seconds is gonna be. Just like that's a good smell. Good. Yeah. Did you like cooking? I started to because when I got into the, all the exercise and I always felt really hungry uh -huh. I I stopped eating sweets because I'm like this is not gonna fill me up and the, and uh, the, the more I started to eat you know like instead of twice a day growing to five times a day like you don't want to eat the same meal so I feel like I was forced into learn the new dishes and yeah so it's I don't know I, I prefer eating <laughs> me too me too I'll tell you something Do, doing this uh, this doing lockdown thing I, there are two things that i'm grateful for no actually three things i'm grateful for first this project i'm working right now came out i was running actually i went for a run and this i just throw up this thing in my mind this idea in my mind two i uh, i never I, I like going to gym i go quite often but i, I never liked running outdoors i never liked it. i don't know for some reason i always prefer to run you know in the gym but yeah during lockdown i had no choice so i love mm. it now for example before i started mm. as well, this morning i went for a run as well like for the park and everything and um nowadays i just love it i just love running outside and the third thing i'm grateful for for the lockdown is i learned how to cook i had no option <laughs> i never be like good wow. in the kitchen yeah i never been look good in the kitchen i'm very good eating i love eating as well but i had no choice but i mean basic i can eat like cook basic stuff but i, yeah. I feel so proud and i love it and i, I, I want to keep cooking because it's, this, it's is, a, this is good yeah this is good to improve improve yourself during like the most difficult time of the that's okay, true. Like century. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember one of my ex-partners. My ex-partner said to me, "My God, how can you, how can you uh, like start a relationship with someone if you don't know how to cook?" I remember kept that in my mind like for the years. I like, my goodness, it's true. I mean, but I mean, you cannot. It's, I just never had the ability, you know. But when I need yeah. to do it, you know, I said, "Okay, there's yeah. no choice." Then I, yeah, and I'm enjoying it. Actually, sometimes you just need a push, you know, to kind of start doing something. And when you start doing, yeah. I enjoy it, and I'm yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Right, Alex, okay. let's go for another one. Right, and uh, I've done um, two people. You are my third person for Lithuania already. I've done a lovely oh. girl. I've done a lovely girl. I actually, she used to live in London as well. She's back in Lithuania now. She's lovely. Um, Lucia, and I've done as well. Um, a very nice guy. He's from, uh, he's from Lithuania, but he lives in London. And you're my third one. So they oh. <laughs> healing up, you see? You see? Right, let's go for another question. Uh, how do you think okay. how do you think you die or how would you like to die if you could choose? Oh, well, that's a good question. I would always have this uh, debate with friends because it's it's nice to die instantaneous because then you don't need to go through the process of uh, thinking how it's gonna affect all the people who care about you. But at the same time, it would be really nice to die from some sort of disease where you have like still like a month to live and you can actually, I mean, I would love all the pity. I know people don't like it, but I would love people coming and they're like, oh, you poor thing, you know, you're so young <laughs> and you know, and everyone would be so nice to me. And then, you know, I would be like, oh, could you cook, you know, these dishes for me? So I probably wouldn't need to cook anything. And I would just get this exposure of people visiting me, you know, for this like month. And I feel like well, that would be good as well, you know. Oh, that's nice. Aside from, you that's know, 
but I would love. I mean, I love PT. That's a good point. Very good point. Right, Alex. I've got three questions left for you. Let's get it done. Okay. Right, Alex. Um, what do you consider most romantic? I don't know. Maybe friend? balconies. Maybe balconies and evenings. I think okay. that's something what I would remember from my experience in general. Like every time, if I would be in a balcony in the evening, maybe there's a candle, maybe there's a, like there's something about that because evening tends to be quite still and you know with a person and you, and you know it's kind of toned down like the you know maybe people are a bit more tired and you know the conversations which flows at that point are, are much more. Maybe relax, like you just have this moment. I don't know. And I feel like balconies are <laughs> that for terrorists. That's place. good. That's good. Actually, you made me think as well. When I imagine you're going on holidays with someone, or even like in your in your flat or anywhere, and this if this person comes to you, you know, it's just a shared moment. I think romance can be anything. Mm. Like if you feel, you know, there's not like right or wrong answer. There's just like how you feel about it. And uh, mm. yeah, for me as well. I think for me, romantic kids would be like just the attention because nowadays people they are so busy with their lives which is normal if they have their life they're yeah. you know they're, they're everything and um, when they give like a small touch or just like a small you know attention to you in a different way as yeah. you said awkward or something it just for me particularly i just want to just make my day and i feel like the special person two questions left let's do it two questions yes <laughs> Let's get another one for Alex from Lithuania. Alex, um, if you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would you go and why? Uh, I really, I mean, I really want to go to New York because uh, they released a new video camera. So this is the only place I could buy it. So I would go there to get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but for no other reason than that, uh, I don't know if this question satisfies you. But... No, no, there's not. The, the whole thing of the show where they're not right or wrong, they're just your point of view on me. Yes, absolutely. Have you been there before? Surely, like a holiday in Thailand would be, you know, like nice or something. But, but what comes to your I mind? I really right want now? this camera. Yeah, of course. Have you been to New York before? No. I mean, so I would visit places as well. Of course, you know, of um... course. I think uh, it, was, camera. it was my dream to go to New York when since I was when I started studying English when I was uh, 12 years old. It was always my dream to go to New York. And uh, uh, three years ago, no, four years ago, I, my best friend who lives he, he in Montreal, in Canada, he works in a, he was working in a bank at the time, so he was traveling a lot. And one day I, mm. I was to work in London. He said to me, "Really, do you want to go to New York in two weeks? In two weeks time?" I was. What? I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "I'm going to go to New York, so you just can get your flights and I've got to accommodate everything for free." I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so it was one of the best experiences I ever had. Yeah. Right, Alex. Just one question left. Shall we do it? Yeah. Let's yeah, do it. please. Good. Last question. Let's do. Right, uh, it's a good one then. Um, if you could make up a school subject, what that would be and why? Uh, would be something to um, prepare for life. Good. Something what people never never do. They, they always it's always like mathematical stuff, you know. But it would be something more like practical. Would be more about you know about you know saving money or mm -hmm. what you should. Um, We should think of you would want to buy the flat, but not about that. It would be about job interviews, you know, about certain qualities you could, you know, persist. Uh, for example, you know, because there's like a class maybe on ethics, but you know, they they, they could, uh, you know, like this new subject could explore more like the consequences if you, you know, if you being like a selfish what can it lead to you know in the long term maybe I, the subject could also explore relationships uh, and then encourage people you know like it would be something like just like basics on on life just to have a, a good life you know and you know they you know they might also touch you know subjects on like narcotics saying you know you know you can always shield yourself but it's much worse you know it's probably the best thing is to maybe don't judge people if you don't know what they're going through or you know um 
it's you like know, if you do try. I totally agree. I think yeah, seeing something like like uh, like as you said, preparing for you know to be open minded, they accept things how it comes. Yeah. Like uh, people, there might be different yeah. uh, like uh, different point of views or different things, but um, you just need to accept it and uh, to, you know, you don't need to yeah. uh, actually you need to respect. If you, you don't need to understand or to, uh, but if you respect, is a rather big you know, it's a big step. Right, Alex, mm. not the end yet, okay? What am I going to do now? I'm going to give away some words and you just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? Quick thinking, right? <laughs> Don't worry, it's quick. Let's start with money. A lot. Love. Good. Love? Um, um, honest. Okay, family. Lovely. Sex? Good. Life. Um, uh, fulfilling. Good. Politics. Boring. Religion. Um, inspiring. Good. Fear. Irrational. Friendship. True. Desire. Deepest regret, I want to say don't have good, okay, good one. <laughs> Let's pretend now I'm going to have a coffee with your boyfriend and I'm going to ask your boyfriend, tell me the most beautiful thing about Alex and tell me something that he needs to improve on. What do you think your best your boyfriend will tell me? Oh, that's easy because I already asked this question, so he would say the best thing about me is my perception on life um, because he said he haven't met anyone who would have that type of view on life um, which he admires and then I think he would need to uh, the thing I would need to improve on he would say <laughs> he probably would say something like uh, I could maybe care more about Thanks. Okay, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alex, now let's play Alex in the magic box and you can ask me a question. Okay, I I asked three, three people already. I'm like, give me something to ask William, and they're <laughs> like, Arr. so in the end, I'm just gonna ask something, something out of my head, um, which was like the question I came up myself. Which okay. is, if you would have a, like, what would be your free dinner party guests, dead or alive? Actually, I, I, I would go to with Princess Diana. I would like to go to have a dinner with her. Yeah, I'd like to. But go. you old, you're gonna be all together. So like, it's you, Princess Diana. Okay, and me. Two more. Ah, uh, two more. Okay, me, Princess Diana. Um, Actually, I would get my best friend as well. I would invite him to my best friend as well, of course. All right. Of course, I would invite him. And I would, I would, I would get um, one of my, my biggest idols like, I grew up with. Her name is Xuxa. Yeah. She's a Brazilian entertainer. Um, um, right. Yeah, she's the, uh, actually, she's the most I grew up with. Every Brazilian, before you can ask, they know Xuxa, they know Xuxa because everyone grew up. Yeah, three d Nips, I am my would best and Shusha. Would you feel that Princess Diana would feel a little bit like out of place there? Um, as I said to you, as you no, know, I think I would, of course, I'd be intimidated. Of course, I would be like, oh wow, my God, how is? But I would love just to to be around her, to feel her vibe, mm. because I think she's such a, a you know a unique person. Yeah. Like, her kindness, just to be able to um, feel it, that, that vibe, like very close yeah. to a moment. I think I would, I would choose her for sure. Alex, yeah. did you enjoy the show? Yes. Good. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. Right. I, just before you go, um, if you can tell a positive message, a positive quote, something that inspires you in life. It's maybe like that motto I try to live, you know, my life with, which is, um, as long as you, you know, try try as many things as possible and don't think about what other people think of you and as long as you don't hurt anyone in a process you're probably gonna have a wonderful life Beautiful. um which is you know that's what i what i live by 
Beautiful. My mom said to me when I was very young, she said to me, whatever you do, just make sure that you're not gonna hurt anyone and for sure you're gonna be okay. I remember saying this, her saying that. I remember. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good advice and I, yeah, you're totally right. Alex, it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed. My God, you're such an interesting person. You know, I could go on and on with you talking to you because I can see that uh, you have a lot of talks that could be discussing. You're such a nice person. I really like it. I'm very glad that you oh. accepted my invitation. I'm very happy. I can and promote uh, my upcoming book. What's your book about? What's the name? Um, well, it, it's it's called My Wife Jody, and um, oh, okay. oh wow, and uh, it's uh, it's you know it's uh, pure fiction, a little bit of. Uh, fantasy but not that much but the really the book is about I explained someone well yesterday um, without giving any plot it's I feel like you me and most of the people around us we all uh, belong to a sense of freedom you know that okay. we decide what's best and what's the best for us and uh, not socialism which is completely opposite when someone else decides but in this book and I'm myself I'm, I'm libertarian but um, in this book, I explore, you know, the story about the marriage where it's um, when socialism is, you know, in a sense, I'm, I'm asking the question, can it be better? Because if someone makes a decision for you, which you ultimately can't do yourself, is that bad or is that, you know, or is it that still wrong? And this is something I, you know, I... I, I kind of, you know, explore, but it is, it's a fiction and it includes time traveling and, you know, but yes. it's, yeah. Thank you very much, sure. all the best, okay? It was a pleasure, Alex. Thanks so much for your time and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Sure. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.